What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. Today, we're back with my latest acquisition, a Hoopty Porsche Boxster. So here it is, my latest acquisition, a 2011 Porsche Boxster. And this is relatively cheap. It's a little bit higher mileage car, but that's okay. It's got 104,000 miles on it. And I got this thing for crazy cheap money. I got it for $14,000 from ACV Auctions, a dealer only auction. It's got a few nicks and scrapes and dings here and there, but overall, I think the car presents very well. You guys can tell me what you think, but personally, I think it presents itself very, very nicely. Sharp looking car. That yellow really pops. You got the convertible top, which I know some of you hate convertibles, but I personally love being able to put the top down. I also love that this generation doesn't have the runny headlights. You know, the headlights that look like runny eggs. I love the way this car looks. Take a look at it from the front right here. Would you look at that? Absolutely beautiful. This is an automatic transmission car. I know, I know, I can already hear it. Bleh. But guess what? This is a PDK transmission. Same transmission that I had in my Porsche Panamera. And these things shift quick. I forgot that it was locked, but that's okay. I have the key right here. Bingo. Now let's open the door and, oh, I've got to, don't pay any attention to that. Like I said, high mileage hoopty, okay? Some of this weather stripping needs to be glued back into place. Let's pop the trunk. One of the things I love about this car is it is a true mid-engine car. You probably expect to see an engine back here if you're not familiar with Porsches, but no, there's actually a trunk. But back behind here, oil and coolant. Yes, there's a dipstick right there. Close this up. I don't know what else we have back here. Looks like a little package tray thing for the convertible top, and that's it. Up front, well, we have a frunk because again, mid-engine car. The engine actually sits like right here in this vehicle. Pretty cool if you ask me. Let's pop the front trunk. Let's see what she's working with under here. This car is really dirty. I almost feel bad even bringing it to the channel this filthy. You got a few things up here, starting with the battery. The batteries on these are always gonna be located underneath this. Up here, you have, I honestly don't know what this is. What do we got going on under there? I have no idea what that's even for. Air filter? Is there some kind of a some kind of a filter in that box? See, I, I went to opening it thinking I'm gonna be able to know exactly what it is. Not a clue. Not a clue. Over here, brake fluid. And of course, right up here is your windshield washer reservoir. And then it came with what I thought was pretty cool, some hybrid brand new windshield wipers. There's some cover here for a fuse box. Don't know where that goes. And then we've got a tire inflator just kind of lounging around up here as well. I think this is an awesome little car. And spoiler, I have driven it. It is kind of a hoopty because it does have some paint defects. Like, I don't know what's going on there. Somebody tried to touch it up with a different color, yellow or something. I don't know. It's got a scrape and a dent right there. That kind of sucks. And the... Uh, this doesn't work. You see the window? It tries. But if you rattle this, listen. Yeah. Uh, door handle is broken, so that'll have to be addressed. It's got relatively good tires. They don't match. It's got two tires in the front that are one pair and then two in the back that are another pair. Whatever. And again, little scrapes, little nicks and dings here and there. But overall, I think the car actually presents itself very well. It's a good looking car. You got some weather stripping here that likes to fall down. Um, someone tried gluing it with hot glue. That didn't, uh, that didn't work. So we'll have to you know, address that at some point. Then when you get on the interior, um, it's missing the kick panel over here. I don't, I don't know what happened to it, but it's gone. Uh, don't know what this is. It's just kind of hanging out here. Yeah, I, I don't know. You got some plastics. Looks like it's missing the, uh, the little carpeted floor mats. Then you have these. These are just, this is for the frunk and the trunk. They no longer work. I, <laughs> this whole thing, I guess, needs to be... Oh, there we go. Yeah, you can pull this. Nothing happens. Same thing with the back. And that's not all. There's more. Now, honestly, the interior actually looks pretty good on this car, guys. It really does. And 
it drives down the road just fine. But let's fire it up real quick and I'll show you the next thing that doesn't work. I mean, it wouldn't be a high mileage Porsche if something wasn't broken, right? It shows key one on the instrument panel there. Fires right up. You kind of hear an exhaust leak. Hear that? That's weird. It goes away though. It does. It sounds like it's missing a catalytic converter or something. I, I don't know. But anyway, it warns you to put on your seatbelt, blah, blah, blah. But here's a button. Let me turn this down. A button right here for the spoiler. I said for the spoiler. I said for the spoiler. Oh, right. That's right. It, it doesn't work. But I'll tell you what does work. Let's close the door. Both power windows work. Looks like the convertible top probably works. Let's give it a try. There it is, there it was. And it's a quick top too, guys. You're probably talking like 10, 12 seconds. Done, start to finish. And we are now in a drop top. Of course, express power windows, both of them down. And look at that, you are ready to roll in style in this car. Refill washer fluid, and then it, it comes up with this red exclamation point, service now. I don't know what service it wants, probably an oil change. I haven't checked the oil, so I have no idea. You got a power point here, and I, I don't know what that's supposed to be, an ashtray? Is this where you stick a cup holder? I don't know. Here is the interesting thing. Uh, yes, it has the books, and then it's got these. I don't know what any of this is, but it's got these Porsche part numbers. Uh, not a clue. Wind stop lock lever i plenty of them let's see if i can get a part number off of this for you guys some of you are going to look this up and you'll be able to tell me exactly what it is so this is a 986-561-737-0001c and that's all i know and it's 6 6 of 2003 is what it says i have no idea but there's a pack of them but check this out all right right here you push this down and look what pops out that's right freaking cup holders man are you serious dual cup holders and then you can close this with the cup holders open how about that then when you're done you just push them back in and they stow away behind where the airbag would go. Very nice. Of course, I've already tested air conditioning. It works. The heat works. Um, fuel economy on this thing is crazy. It gets like 29 miles a gallon on the highway. Um, I've got no warning lights on the dash other than the exclamation mark that comes on because apparently it wants some kind of a service. So let's turn on the headlights. Let's make sure they work. I don't know if it's got fog lights. I guess it does. Yeah, it's got fog lights front and rear apparently. Let's check and make sure our lights work. And then uh, I guess we ought to take her out on a little test drive. Yeah, lights, what about down here? Lights, yes. See how the exhaust sounds good now? It's only when it's cold that it sounds funky. Once it warms up, good to go. So if I wanted to make this thing like really, really nice, what I need are the inner fender liners, uh, the front inner fender liners for both sides. And I'm looking at the camera and for whatever reason, it looks dark on that side, medium here and light here. I promise you in person, that is not the case. If you see the sun is over there. So the sun is more shining here and because of the curvature, it changes the way it looks. The car actually is a very uniform color. Looks like the lights, fog lights, everything seemed to work like they're supposed to. So I think we're ready to take it out on a drive. What is this? Oh, this lifts your seat up? I don't know why you'd want to do that. There's literally nothing. The engine actually sits under here, so I don't know how you would access it. You'd probably have to remove the convertible top and this big roll bar to be able to get to the engine. Anyway, enough of that. Why don't we take this thing on a ride? and see how she does. All right, are you guys ready? Let's get this thing down the road. By the way, the PDK transmission in these things are very quick. They're very nice. And yes, it has paddle shifters. These are a little, these are a little strange though, not something I'm used to. Normally I'm used to kind of the flappy paddles, but this one, pushing it in is a shift up and pushing it from behind is a shift down. So you can actually up and then use your fingers from the back down. And of course you have manual mode right here and then back into normal drive. And like I said, it is a PDK transmission in this little car. We're gonna wait for traffic to get out of the way here and then we're gonna get on the road. 
This thing, as small as it is, and even though it's just a Boxster, she really gets it, man. She's a, she's a fun car. All right, here we go. Oh, wow. We already spun the tires. I just came out, we're not even speeding, guys, at all. It just, <laughs> she gets it, man. She really gets it. We spun the tires, traction control kicked in. Now, most of these that you're gonna find, I mean, aren't gonna have 104,000 miles on it, but the majority of these that I was able to find online retail are gonna cost you between 22 and $25,000. I got this car for 14 grand. $14,000. What a steal of a deal. In my opinion, yes, it's got some bumps and bruises and a few little things to work out, but I think the savings is well worth it. Speed limit's gonna go up to 65 here in just a second. And uh, hell, we're only going like 40, 45. Uh, when it gets up to 65, here we go. You ready? Let's just kinda, there it goes. Wow. Wow. Oh, oh, oh man, damn, <laughs> little car gets it, man. This little car, no joke, it moves, golly. These are so much fun. It's been so long since I've had a Porsche, I forgot how much I enjoyed it. Not too long ago, I had a uh, 2002 911, I think it was. That car was epic. I enjoyed it. It was a manual transmission, and I loved every minute of it. I didn't think I was going to like the automatic variant as much as I do, but I'm here to tell you, the PDK transmission is absolutely phenomenal. And listen to that engine. Wow! It just gets it, man. It feels much faster than it actually is. I'm also fairly surprised at how quiet it is in here with the top down. I'm cruising at 72 miles an hour and I don't have to scream, I don't have to yell. It's very comfortable for such a small car. I fit in here just fine. It handles, well, of course, it's a Porsche. It handles like you would expect it to. This is just an overall great sports car for very little money. So we're getting close to our five mile mark. And here we are. Seven speed automatic transmission. We've got this silly little Chevy back here trying to ride my ass. Man, what a fun little car this is. For 14 grand, I think I like this better than I like the Bentley that I paid $24,000 for. Uh, the Bentley I thought I got for a pretty good price, but this car right here, wow. Just an absolute blast. Yes, I'm saying it. I like the most basic Porsche you can buy, the Boxster, what they call the poor man's Porsche, better than I like my Bentley. I do. This thing is far more fun, and I think the color just really makes it pop. Yes, the cruise control works. Yes, the heat and air conditioning works. Power locks work. Really, there's only a few minor things on this car not functioning right. The exterior door handle on the passenger side is kind of a big deal to get fixed. The spoiler, I don't know, does it really matter all that much? Nah, not really, not to me anyway, but you know, it could be fixed. You're missing a couple of fender liners and you're missing the carpeted uh, kick panel for the driver's side. And of course, a couple of floor mats. You clean this thing up and fix all those little things, you got yourself a pretty sharp little Porsche that you could really take out and enjoy. Of course, I would do some basic maintenance to it myself. I would change the spark plugs, maybe change the transmission fluid, definitely change the transmission fluid, and uh, probably do a coolant flush on it just as a safety precaution. Very minor stuff, very basic maintenance that a lot of you could probably do at home. Worst case scenario, take it to Porsche, let them do it. But still, $14,000 versus 22 to 25,000. That's a lot of savings right there for a little car 
that just runs down the road? Perfect. Now, of course, you know I've got to film as we go past the fireman's house that likes throwing rocks at people's cars, just in case he decides to come out here and do it again. I'm literally going 40 miles an hour in a 45. So, yeah. <laughs> I saw him when I was voting the other day. Uh, he turned out to be a much smaller guy than I thought he was. I don't know. Uh, first time I stood like right by him, he didn't even know I was there. I saw him and I was like, man, that is a very small dude. Don't underestimate a small guy, though. I'm not saying that small guys can't fight. I've, I have encountered some pretty scrappy uh, smaller dudes before. It was just kind of surprising to me standing next to him uh, how small the guy really was. So here it is, the little Porsche that I got for very cheap money. We're about to see what kind of fuel economy. Oh, wow, no way. Well, over the last probably six miles, 31 miles a gallon, this thing's supposed to average about 29. As you can see from the gauges, though, other than the little red exclamation mark, which may only be on for washer fluid, I honestly don't know. Temperature gauge looks fine. No other warning lights on the dash. The stereo. Good stereo. I don't know if it has a CD in it or not. Apparently, it's got a... Uh, Bluetooth audio, I have no idea how to set that up. Phone right there. To connect the telephone, set device list. Bingo, Bluetooth device list. No kidding. It's got a couple of them in there. Obviously we need to, uh, we need to go through and delete all that. You've got traction control off in case you wanna get out there and kinda, you know, play and burn your tires, maybe do some donuts, you could do that as well. I wish the spoiler worked, it, it's kinda bugging me. I'd love to see this thing with the spoiler up, but beggars can't be choosy, man. This is what I got to work with and I'm just gonna have to be happy with it. I love this rear view mirror too, look how it's curved. Really interesting rear view mirror. You got your garage door openers up here as well. It's a great little car, packed full of features and it rides surprisingly well. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen, my $14,000 2011 Porsche Boxster. I'm gonna leave it up to you guys in the comment section below to tell me whether you think it was a, a good deal, a great deal, a bad deal, or an average deal. I'm sitting here thinking to myself, I got a pretty dang good deal on a really sharp little sports car. This thing, in my opinion, just looks absolutely phenomenal. I wish we could get this, uh, this spoiler. I know I shouldn't pry on it. Kind of, kind of really want that spoiler to uh, to work. I love that single exit exhaust tip, just right there, dead in the center. Man, she's a sharp looking car. Well, that's about it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, do me a favor, drop your comments below and hit the thumbs up button to let me know. Till next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.